Hello guys, welcome back to our study of John. Today we're going to look at John 9, 1 through 12. Last week we finished chapter 8 and it was it was a really good chapter. I got a lot of out of it, honestly, and I, I actually miss one thing, a little detail that I wanted to tell you guys, which is what, I, what I'm going to make my introduction uh, to this chapter. So the point that I try, that I forgot to make last time that was very important for the whole chapter. And I, I, when I saw it, I was like, how could I, how could I not say anything about that? Is the fact that what ended up happening in the end of the last chapter? It was a very, very, uh, it wasn't surprising. I think it was going to happen because of how it was going, the narrative, but it was still very shocking, I guess. I think well, Jesus, Jesus declares uh, that he's the son of God. Yeah. To everyone. Right. And what happens after that? Um, what is it? I think Evans. They stoned like him. him. They, stoned I, I, him yeah. they stoned him. They, they tried to. Um, I thought you were gone for, there for a minute, Evan. <laughs> yeah, I'm just shutting up. So yeah, they stoned him. Well, they tried to stone him once again. They tried to stone him. Who tried to stone him? Remember the context. At the end, well, who was he talking to specifically? Well, the Jews that uh, that believed in him. believe in him. That believed. I believed. Yeah. So the Christians, <laughs> and yeah. and it's so interesting how like the turn of events that take place in chapter eight, because what happens at the beginning? What was like the big thing that happened at the beginning of chapter eight? Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. <laughs> no, it's, it, it's, uh, um, I, what was it? Oh, the, the woman. Yeah. Woman. Yeah. What did they want to do with her? Well, um, they wanted to throw a stone at her. They wanted to stone her as well. But did yeah. they? Nope. No, because they realized that they couldn't because they were sinners. But yet, what's interesting is even though that was true and they didn't stone the woman because of the fact that they've all sinned, when Jesus this starts telling these people, these Christians, the truth, they do what? They want to stone him. They do stone him. They do try they do to. Him, yeah. they, don't, they don't even think about it. They're so mad because of the situation that they decide to, to throw rocks at him as if he deserved it. See how that works? It's so interesting. Sorry. So the contrast... The contrast that John uses with the beginning and with the ending of chapter 8, it's very interesting. Because it was the Christians that actively decided to stone Jesus for telling them the truth. It was the people that believed in him because of what he was saying. And I just want to say that for, just take it as food for thought, you know. How are we reacting to the words of God in our lives? Because we got to be, you know, the most, most likely is we're not going to like the words of Jesus, <laughs> the, you know, the things that he has to say to us, but they're good for us. I mean, that's what brings us life, gives us life. So that was the introduction, though. Um, I did feel bad about forgetting to say that because it's such an important part of chapter eight. I mean, it's basically like the whole chapter summarized. Not the religious didn't even try to stone Jesus. It was uh, the Christians that did. Interesting. Uh, but eh, food for thought. Anyways, uh, here's Anthony. Welcome, Anthony. Glad to have you. Welcome. This is Jose and Mr. Barris Evan. And oh man, know. you gave away the secret. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. That was the problem. Right. Hello. Welcome. Thank How are you. you doing? 
I'm good. How about you guys? You guys doing all right? All right. Yeah. Doing good. No, so Welcome. Enough. Thank is you. This, is this a first for you? Are you? Is this the first time you're studying the Bible through Zoom or, or through like an online yeah. means? Yes, uh, the first time. Yes. Cool. That's fine. Yeah, so, so it's the first time for everything. I do. I personally prefer uh, in-person Bible studies, but we got to do what we got. So Jose is in Orlando. Evan is in Port Richie, basically, New Port Richie. And uh, yep, I have no excuse. It's, it's, it's far away. We can't, we can't be traveling that much. Uh, but yeah, Anthony is like things here close by in Odessa in Trinity. Yes, I guess. All right. Well, so uh, I don't know if you heard me, but we do record these. So if you don't want to uh, have your face on like a video or whatever, you don't have to use the camera. I also edit them. Um, so it's, it's all right. Uh, so today you came right, right on time. We're going to look at John 9, 1 through 12. That's going to be the passage that we're going we're gonna to start today. So I'll read and then we'll pray. How about that? Sound okay? Sure. All right. So John 9 says, Now as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sin, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he, sat, when he had said these things, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And he said to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which is translated sent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. Therefore, the neighbors and those who previously had seen that he was blind said, Is not this he who sat and begged? Some said, This is he. Others said, He is like him. He said, I am he. Therefore, they said to him, How were your eyes opened? He answered and said, A man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said to me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. So I went and washed, and I received sight. Then they said to him, where is he? He said, I do not know. Lord, thank you so much for this Bible study. Thank you so much for everybody that was able to come, because it really is you that does the work in us. We're here because of you. We're here because of your mercy, because of your love, because by ourselves, we can do nothing, God, just as Jesus said. And it's true for us more so than, than anything, because we are weak. We are weak. We are creatures that constantly want bad things. But in that state, we have understood that we depend on you, that we need you, that we want to serve you, that we want to know you. And that's why we're here, to know you and to let you be known. Because that's the work that you're doing, the work that you did, and the work that you want us to do. So bless us this day. Help us speak your words, to know your truth, and to understand everything that we haven't. Thank you so much. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. amen. All right. So if you didn't know, Anthony, we go verse by verse. We read a passage from the Bible. We've been going through John. Uh, we've started about last year in May, I believe. And we finally reached John 9. Today, we're going to look at John 9, 1 through 12. And so we go verse by verse, asking questions about it, um, trying to understand the thought process, the social interaction, the characters, their mindset, because kind of like a story, you have to understand the context and what it's trying to teach us. And um, yeah. Absolutely. So, so uh, verse one, what does it say? I'll read that one more time. It says, now as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth. All right. So, first of all, oh, whoa, look at this. <laughs> That's crazy. Hey, we got another guy. <laughs> Dude, cool. 
this is setting up to be a good study. There we go. Hey, el parcero de la church. Hello, What's guys. Up? What's up, Juan? Dude, it's been nice. a while. Nice to stay here again. Yeah, nice to see you. Of, of time. <laughs> yeah, long time. <laughs> cool. Not too long. Too long. There Hello. he is. Dude, that's crazy. I actually, we actually have a new person today. So it's kind of like interesting that you came as well. I wasn't expecting oh, that's him. Cool. That's so cool. Wasn't expecting one. Cool, cool, cool. Anyways, so you came right on time. We just read the beginning of what we we're going to see today. Uh, today, we started chapter nine of John. If you want to read by yourself, it's going to be one through 12. Otherwise, we're, we're just starting from verse, the first verse. It says, now as Jesus passed by, he saw a man who was blind from birth. So this is really going to work as our context, because uh, as we did in the introduction, uh, we said what happened at the end of chapter eight, the Jews that believed in Jesus, as it says in chapter eight, decided to throw stones at Jesus because of the blasphemy, supposedly, that he was saying. And, and he passed. He left the temple. He went away. And so we come into chapter nine and chapter nine stars as now as Jesus passed by, which is how we ended the last chapter. Uh, if you guys want to go there, it says. Then they took up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple going through the midst of them and so passed by. And it's interesting because the chapter nine starts the same way. Now, as Jesus passed by, right? So it, it's, uh, it's kind of like tying it together. So this could be, this could, this probably was happening in Jerusalem because it's still kind of like it's tied down together. Um, you guys think that's the case? Right. He's, he's still passing by. He's probably in Jerusalem because that's, yep. that was, that's been the context, the setting since chapter seven. Jesus has been in Jerusalem since chapter seven. Chapter eight takes, all, uh, takes place in the temple. And now chapter nine is as he's leaving Jerusalem. It says, what does it say? Who does, who does he see? see uh, he, as he went along, he saw a blind man from birth so that was born blind right how do you think what do you think what, what do you what what do you think as a person when you see someone that's disabled uh mentally or physically like what's what goes through your mindset what's what's the first thing that you think about when you see them first thing i think about is how grateful I am to not have that. Okay. And then I go into how they're able to adapt. To that situation? To, yeah. Yeah. I, I just sound like Suko from the Avatar. That's rough, buddy. <laughs> it, it is rough. I, um, yeah. I, I, I honestly, I feel bad, but I don't think that's, you know, I don't know. There's so much there that you can think about. Uh, but I, I was specifically looking for an answer that I, I guess you guys didn't answer. I mean, didn't, didn't, wouldn't say, which is okay. I mean, I'm yeah, glad we, that we did, we did pick up on where you were going with that. No, 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 that's not what I mean. Oh, okay. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. It's all right. Any other thoughts, any other perspectives perhaps that, that are new? Oh. Well, here I'll go. Let me let me start with you. Um, if um, for instance, if you know, you see somebody that that has mental or physical disability, um, for the majority of people, it's hard to um, not judge them or not look at them uh, differently uh, for that. Um, I feel as if you know this might be a very common thing, but uh, God loves everybody equally. Uh, no matter f physical, mental disability. Um, but that's my take on it. 
try not to look at them differently treat them equally treat them with respect right yeah definitely <laughs> um because i think some of us are not conscious of the fact that we might be disabled not necessarily in the sense of physically or mentally but spiritually i think most of us are disabled uh, spiritually well yeah sorry to interrupt but remember it's a spiritually dead that's a little bit more than disabled <laughs> <laughs> that's true you're right Definitely. but but it's more like, like i would say disabled in the sense of it's more difficult for them to understand the physical realm or to comprehend it um but but you're right in the end everybody <laughs> it it's alive or dead spiritually <laughs> so yeah true or it's like you feel out of balance like you feel feel like something's missing yeah and yeah. it's that well like thankfully you feel time. that way because not everybody yeah. feels like that yeah. Yeah. some some people feel like they're okay life is okay i don't need to worry about god or it's not important yeah. to me or anything like that yeah but, uh one of the um, so. one of the I heard a joke, uh, I, I suppose you'd call it a joke, but I heard a, a quip recently that I thought was really interesting. It was a Norm McDonald quip where somebody was asking about, um, you know, how could God allow X, Y, and Z things to happen in this world? And he goes, well, I don't know about that, but it sounds like you have a God-shaped hole in your heart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but it's interesting that you asked that question, though, because it, it kind of goes with the setting of what it's being set up here. Um, so we're, we're going to continue, but just know that we're going to touch on that. Why, why is the world so... Why do just, bad things happen to good people, huh? <laughs> just, just, just to let you know, I did cheat a little bit because <laughs> I did read ahead a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> no, you okay. Well, let's not cheat. No cheating, guys. We're going with the with the verse that we have in mind. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. So let's go to verse two. What does it say? It says, and his disciples asked him, saying, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? So that was actually one of the things that I wanted maybe to hear from one of you. I mean, thankfully, I didn't, I guess. But this is the first thing that they think about when they see this uh, disabled person, this blind man, is uh, who sinned? You know, what ha whose fault is it that he was born like this? Because yeah, there why, has to be someone that was at fault. It's like, uh, yeah, why did God curse this man? Exactly. Basically? Yeah. And that's their question, which is, I mean, I think it's coherent. I don't think it would be necessarily a wrong question. At least not in our perspective. Maybe to God it would be. But to us, it seemed like the right question to make. Um, what did they do to deserve that? <laughs> because they might have they must have done something. If not him, then his parents. Right. And the question is, why would they think like that? Why would we think like that? If when something is when something bad is happening in our lives, when something bad is happening to other people, why is the first thing they must have sinned or they must be in sin or something. They must be doing something wrong. Why is that the first thing that comes into mind? Well, I mean, the modern day example of why people, I mean, this question it even gets asked today by uh, people who aren't Christian, but usually their reason for asking it is to prove, to try to prove that there is no God, you True. know? Yeah. But here specifically, we know that they believe. So what, what is their mindset about that? why I, I suppose it could be because um uh, they're trying to understand it's like this man did did nothing wrong how could god do that and i mean that's that just seems just based off of the passage of just like how could god do this is right. basically what they're trying to understand well no because no, the problem is it becomes that question if the answer is not he did something wrong, right? Because if he did something wrong, then he deserves it. Or yeah, if but, her parents but, did something wrong, then he deserves it. Yeah, so it's kind of like they saw him. They're like, oh, he must have did something wrong. Jesus, right. did his parents do anything wrong? And I suppose uh, 
later on if Jesus answers that you're right it would turn into that question yeah interesting right I, I'm actually interested why you guys didn't say that. <laughs> like, can you, can one of you answer that? Why didn't you say? Well, I, I guess I didn't say it because it sounds harsh. It sounds harsh. <laughs> yeah. It, it actually doesn't like... sound very merciful. It's like, yeah, yeah. they deserve it. <laughs> sounds harsh. No. Yeah, when you see someone... Uh, I think at some point it might have that question might have come into my mind. Uh, but it just seems very unfair, very unmerciful, very unkind. Because right? if it's not their fault, then it must be God's fault. And if it's God's fault, then why would it, why would he allow that to happen? And it's such a, it's such a horrible state to be at. Imagine a person living without, uh, without being able to hear, without being able to see, without being able to walk, um, or with having a mental disability. It's, man, dude, <laughs> why would God allow that? And I, I'm just forming the questions here. I'm just forming your mindset, your, the setting, so that we can eventually get into the actual uh, heart of it all. But it's important for us to understand these things. It's important to, uh, for us to see it. So let's go to verse three. What does it say? Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. And here is where we get our answer. And it might not be the answer that we want to hear. I don't think. It's actually, it actually has a lot of weight to it. So let's go through this. Did this happen because of something they did? No, nah. no. Nah. Uh, I don't know if I like my version, but uh, the version that I read in Spanish, which I prefer, it says, it's not that their parents sin, and it's not that he sinned. It's just so that the works of um, the works of God should be revealed in him. Right. So it's not it's not it's not important whether they sinned or not. It's the fact of the matter is that through these people. God can show his wonders. Yeah. It's like through these people, God has a pl God has a plan for him, one that you don't see yet, basically. Exactly. And the one that we're going to be seeing throughout this whole chapter, that's incredible. I love this chapter for how this man uh, kind of like treats God, treats Jesus, uh, how, how very, well, first of all, obedient, and then kind of like, like faithful uh, to Jesus, even though he doesn't know who he is. But yeah, so this is going to be all revealed throughout the study that we make in chapter nine. But for the most part of the beginning is just, you know, we're getting settled with the story. So what does it mean that this happened so that the works of God may be displayed? What are the works of God? Oh, his mercy, his mercy, yes, okay. forgiveness, yes. Um, yeah, but does this have to do with mercy? No, in the sense of like forgiveness. This is more like a miracle type of thing. Well, he's he's walking. He's literally walking, not by sight, by faith. The you know I mean? the. The blind man? Yeah. Mm. Which is why the works of God should be revealed in him. No. <laughs> trying. I mean, the, first of all, the text doesn't even say that he's walking. And that, yeah, but you know, he walks. Never mind. Does a blind man walk by faith? Like physically? It's easier for him to. Yeah, but if he, if a blind man walks by faith, like oh yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna just walk through the street and nothing's gonna happen to me because of faith, then a car runs him runs runs him over. 
you can't run <laughs> you can't walk like that that's why they need a stick at the front because they know where they're going or maybe they have a guide you know well naturally like we're talking about yeah. physically. Well, in this the sense, we're talking about physically. Uh, but, you know, physically, he's blind. And it's not really talking about that type of walk by faith, walk by sight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But naturally, the works of God should be revealed in him. Okay. Well, naturally, he has to be more dependent on God. So maybe that has to do with being revealed in him. I don't know. Mm. you're gonna say something anthony i was gonna say um i was gonna uh relate something i would i would assume this would have something to do with um that verse um somewhat prevalent um compare us to the blind man in our walk of faith or not all of us um those who like for myself are just starting out um or those who are you know just getting back into um faith after being the blind man essentially um we don't know um we we don't know we're 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 blind until we we uh understand the word of god and you know study what what he's trying to say in uh this specifically uh this verse about the blind man so that's my take on that um that's so, just so what you're I saying is cheated. I kind of cheated. So what you're saying, first of all, so what you're saying, Anthony, is that this uh this story that John is is uh talking about is using this the physical example of a man being blind to show us the spiritual example or the truth of how we are before God. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. Well, we're going to work more on that, but yeah, definitely. What are you going to say, Jose? Don't well, you? I was going to say, even though he's blind, uh -huh. if he, so God is the light of the world. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so even if he's physically blind, he could still be, like the works of God could still be revealed in him, no matter what. Yeah, but because of the context and because of what we're gonna see it just i wouldn't use that as an example for what you're saying yeah. i mean i don't know I'm trying to I, my original thought was a little bit like um anthony's but i was kind of had to narrow my view and say okay why this blind man in particular okay. and uh i'm what i'm guessing is going to happen because i luckily i didn't read this far uh, ahead yeah uh, also so past this part was uh what i'm guessing is going to happen is well my i'm using the new international version right now says uh so that the works of god might be displayed in him so i figure he's he's the reason why this particular man is blind is so that he could meet jesus and jesus could perform the uh, work of a miracle upon him yeah which would be a work of god in this case not just in the sense of the miracle like actually happening, but what's gonna what's gonna happen afterwards as well. Let's 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 look at this first. <clears throat> let's get back on track. What are the works of God? Right? We we didn't necessarily answer that question. Jose tried a little bit, but there's specifically one passage in the Bible. I know I'm cheating, especially with the rules that I have set in place. Honestly, we're probably gonna cheat a lot. <laughs> admonish him, admonish. But it's just, this is such a good passage explaining to us what the works of God are. Uh, so if you guys want to go with me to Luke 4, 18, it explains it spectacularly. So if you guys want to read it, go ahead. Yeah. 18 through 19. Uh. Yes. I think it's only 18, but yeah, sure. Oh, 18. 18 and 3. 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recover of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. 
And to proclaim the good year. The to good proclaim year the, the acceptable year of the Lord. The acceptable year of the Lord. That's like six things. But these things are so important to us. This is the work of God. And it, it's like, it's so cool to proclaim, to proclaim liberty to the captives. Which is also interesting because um, you, you obviously um, Jesus does have the ability to recover the sight for the blind, but there's also the what we talked earlier about, about being spiritually dead and spiritually awakened. Uh, we always say um, when you're awake, you can see and see how, how things are around you. Right. And so that's also a, another version of spiritually recovering the sight to the blind, which I see why, why you said blind earlier or disabled. Yeah. So just, just to kind of like uh, further the point, I'm using Luke 4, because it talks specifically about what the works of Jesus, the works of God are. Proclaim the good news to the poor. Proclaim freedom to the prisoners, recovery of sight for the blind, set the oppressed free, and proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And it's also important because we're seeing one of the signs right here, recovery of sight for the blind. And I know this is speaking both spiritually and, and physically as he's doing. And we're always going to see that duality. But in the end, we have to know that the most important is to be, set, to be able to see spiritually because right now everybody that has not believed in god they're veiled spiritually veiled they can't see the truth because the 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 prince of this world the god of this world has blinded them with the desires for money the desires for fame with the desires of the flesh with the desires of the world everybody's blinded by it it's not until we're able to see the light that is jesus that we're able to understand what really matters so he literally does, does a miracle. But this is a point that it's literally really made at the end of this whole, uh, of this passage. And we, we really kind of like already spoiled ourselves, but it's fine. You know, it's just, it just makes it more, uh, more impactful, I think. Clear. Apparent. More clear. Yeah. So, so that the works of God should be revealed in him. So you're saying that, so you're saying that people are as messed up as they are, as they have disabilities, they have all these things because God wants to show his work through them? Is that what you're saying? Is that what the text is saying? Jose is shaking his head. How do you know that? Why makes you so sure about that? Because it's... I mean, the world is falling apart. The world, everybody's... Yeah. As messed hey, up as hey, hey, stop testimony. talking, stop talking about today, man. <laughs> and people are evil people. There's no one good on this earth. Even the religious that say they're good, they're not good. It's definitely a testimony. Like what is what is the testimony? What is the testimony though? When we see people that are uh, broken, that are in prison, that are depressed, that want to take their life that are part of some type of uh, addiction or some type of group mm. that just wants the worst for them. What is, what does God want to do with all of that? Why, why does he allow it in the first place? Why well, is there pain? Why is there suffering? He doesn't, he doesn't why discriminate. Is there bad pain? He doesn't discriminate. He discriminate, which That's means true. he wants to give eternal life to, to who? even those who has disabilities and uh oppressions and right even those who sin like us he doesn't discriminate yeah exactly yeah but that's the interesting thing from the beginning we've seen that people have not been good even the greatest prophets and the greatest people in the old testament they've fallen short and <laughs> just look david. at david yeah yep. <laughs> david dude david is like one of the greatest men literally in the bible i mean even to the point where we call jesus the son of david and that's a good thing it's like dang but then we see what david actually did and bro if if a guy did that today 
dude <laughs> x dude this we gotta cancel this man <laughs> cancel culture uh, but yet god before god he was a man after god's own heart so what's interesting about this world what's interesting about how god has made things is the fact that he can make works of art through the ugliest items <laughs> You know, he can play the most beautiful song through the most broken instrument because God wants to show his glory through these vessels of dirt, through these vessels of flesh that we are. If anything, the weakest that we are, the better that he will use us. And that's what it's talking about here in this passage. Why is this man blind? So that he can do the works of God through him. Why? Why do I have a problem with women? Why do people have a problem with money? Why are we so weak to so many different things? Why did Adam and, Adam and Eve sin from the very beginning? Why do we keep constantly trying to give our, the authority to Satan instead of to God? Because in this flesh, in this nature that we have, we constantly want to do bad because we are weak. We are weak. And if we don't understand that, we won't understand the gospel. The gospel is God loves the weak people that know that are weak and that he wants to help them to change, to show his strength in us, to show what he can do through us. You think God can use a blind man? Absolutely he can. You think he can use a person that's maimed? He can use them. You think he can use a person that's mentally disabled? Yes, he can. But, but that's up to us to give him that ability to do it well, as we're gonna I, i'm getting I ahead of myself I, though yeah i think i think i mentioned this a long time ago that ultimately all you really need to do is a admit admit that you have a problem and b be humble and that's the first step and everything else will come afterwards you know yeah oh yeah and of course uh turn towards go back to your father but, uh, you know, that, that, I need to make sure to add that just in case. <laughs> yeah, admitting is like the hardest part. Admitting that you need to change. Admitting Dude, something. And that's, that's the problem of being proud. When you're proud, I, but I can do it, God. But I can do it. But I will do it. But I'm strong enough. But I'm, I have the ability. I, I, just, I, I just have to keep going. And I'm able to do it. Dude, you can't do it. Trust me. I've been on this fight for seven years and I've said the same things for five years until God literally put a situation, different situations in my life where the only thing I can say is I cannot do this. I, it's impossible. <laughs> Dude, by my strength, I will fail. And that's the fact. And when you realize your weaknesses, when you realize that you are weak, that you will never be strong by your strength, that's when you will be your strongest because that's when you depend on God. He is strong. And I know I'm getting ahead of myself again, but this is what it's setting up for to in this chapter. I, I'm, I mean, like uh, the ultimate goal is, uh, as I always said, Jesus is our example. We should rely upon God like Jesus did, you know? If, if Jesus said, I am nothing without the Father and can do nothing without the Father, word by word, you can look it up. It's in John. We read it. If he said that, then do you think you can say, I'm strong. I can make it. I can do it. Dude, <laughs> you can. <laughs> like, take it from the teacher. I'm not your teacher. Take it from our teacher. Take it from Jesus. And... That's the point. That's, that's so, it's such an important point to make. It's, it's through the people that seem that they are the most unable to do things that God will use them the most, the best. It's beautiful. It's really, it's the, the life of faith is amazing. How can this broken, disgusting, <laughs> this wretched person, how can... How can he say he's a Christian? How can he live the life of God when he was such a wicked person, when he was going out to strip clubs and drinking and, 
and doing drugs, how can his life have changed so much because of Jesus? It's crazy, man. But, dude, it's, it's really cool. So, so in this chapter, in this, in this, in this story that we're seeing, why does he specifically, well, why would he want to display, display that? Why, why does he want, why does God, I don't think we talked about that a lot, but why does God want to display his works? For what purpose? For what reason? Why does he have to show off? Mostly because people are hard of hearing, uh, <laughs> True. but, uh, and another, but, um, it all comes into line just about like, um, how do I put this? He wants, he wants you to, what is it? I think the Bible says it glorify, glorify him as in like, um, you, he wants you to recognize that he is God and there is no other. Yeah, actually, <laughs> I thought you were going to say something else, but yeah, that's literally. Yeah, I, I, even I thought I was going to say something else. I'm like, no, that's not quite right. That's what. That's why I stopped for a second because I'm like, that's not quite right. Give me a second. No. Yeah, no, and you're right. God wants to display the His works because, not because He wants to show off, because He wants us to understand that although there's so many things in the world. He's the only one that deserves the number one spot. He's the only one that is good, that really legitimately is good and wants the best for you. Yeah. And, and now that I think about it, when I said glorify, that kind of is kind of what I said kind of sums up, sums it up because um, usually when people think glorify, they think, uh, oh, look at me, I'm so great. But it's not so much that, it's more like, um, no, I'm all there is who else is there oh you you, uh, you you like isis over there oh bad word uh uh <laughs> raw over there yeah whatever that he doesn't exist it's only me yeah no <laughs> you know and, and people try to tell themselves their, that lie and um dude i don't know dude good for you <laughs> honestly if you're strong enough to like you know be proud and have fame and be somebody Good for you, man. But I've come to realization through my life that I'm a loser. <laughs> and without Jesus, I would not be able to do anything that I'm doing and that I've done and that I would do. Like, if you guys listen to my, my story of the Marine Corps, I was the second worst in my platoon of 93 people. Imagine that. That's, that's pathetic. Yet... In that situation, the one that got me through that whole situation was God. I'm a Marine because of God. <laughs> Dude, I wanted to give up. I was like seven weeks in the Marine Corps and I, want, I was done. But because of the strength that God clearly gave me, and to this day, I glorify him because of that. And for other things that he's done in my life, that's just, well, that's just one of the many. I can, see, I can say without a doubt, dude, I can't do it. <laughs> like, if I seem like somebody today, if I made the right decisions today, it's been because of God. And I, I, I won't take it away that you have to be willing for that to happen. You know, it's, it's your willingness as well. But their power really comes from God. The only thing that you have to do is agree. <laughs> yes, I agree. I agree with your word. I understand what you're saying, Jesus. You don't, have to, you don't have to say it. You don't have to agree with what I'm saying. Um, but yeah, he wants to display that, not just spiritually, because he gives us salvation, but also physically, because through Jesus, we can be healed. And that's one thing that we're going to see here. Uh, so let's go to chapter, I mean, verse four. What does it say? says i must work the works of him who sent me while it is day the night is coming when no one can work so this is a very interesting verse and i want to i want to go with you through it with you guys so for how long must jesus do the works of god
for as long as it is day. For as long as it is day. You're thinking about it too hard, Jose. It's in the passage. For as long as it is day. Okay. Now, the question that you can make is, well, how long is the day? Or what is the day? I don't understand that. That would be okay. But let's, let's not ask that question yet. When will we not be able to work anymore? When night has come. When night has come. Makes sense. Usually, uh, we work at the, in the day, and then we go to sleep at night, right? Makes sense. Then, as long as it is day, is the day over yet? Right? It says here, as long as it is day. So today, is the day over yet? No. No. I mean, physically, it's kind of night outside. Physically. You know. I think it's, I think it's <laughs> the day's done. <laughs> but what is this talking about? Right? So, yeah, your answer is right. It's not done yet. What, what, would, the, what would the day be? When Jesus was... Was you, when Jesus was still like here, physically? was still physically. here physically? Mm, no. You sure about that? I want to say, like, um, this is my take on it. Um, night and day, um, according, or not according to the Bible, excuse me. Um, night and day, uh, when they talk about night and day is um, something that you can relate to, like, um, night maybe not uh not being um not being around spiritually essentially um like the word of god or um night not being in everything and day um essentially being uh with christ and and the word okay something like that something along those lines does that make sense yeah but Mm, the passage says, I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. So do you think it relates to what you're saying? Not necessarily. Not, not according to the context, no. Yeah. So does it, does it have to do with revelations? Maybe. Like his second coming, that's what I'm thinking yeah. of. I mean, here's how, I mean, I've been letting everybody else go because I talk too much. Um, so this is how I, how I looked at it. We can say day as an a day, and we can say night as an a night, but right. there's also something else that we've always been saying about God, which is the light of God. And in that case, we could translate day as daylight, okay. and the night as, you know, nighttime. Okay. And so when we say day, we we're actually talking about the light of God being the being light. So is it still is it still is it still the day? Today. Like talking about in the time in, in time time sake or uh, yeah, age sake. Is it still the day? Yeah, I'd say so. Why would you say so? There's one, the there's one specific reason why you can say so. <laughs> I'm going to say, Bible I'm going to go ahead and say. <laughs> you hear that me? That's, that, why? Because we're doing this Bible study. Because we're doing this Bible study? So what, yep. well, what are we doing here? Um, I mean, we're, we're actually worshiping. True. While doing this. What while else? Doing this. Um, dang. There's one work of God that we're doing. <laughs> Actually, there's, we could probably say that all of them. Uh, but honestly, right now we're proclaiming the good news to the poor. Uh, we're proclaiming freedom to the prisoners. We're being recovered of sight from our blindness. We're being set free from being oppressed by the enemy. And we're proclaiming the year of the Lord's, right? Technically, we're sure. doing all that. So we're technically working right now. I mean, according to what the scripture has been saying, if the work of God, Jesus is doing, 
and what he did. That what what did Jesus do? Jesus did what we just talked about. I don't know why I asked that question. <laughs> so like, he is proclaiming the good news to the poor. He's setting the free, I mean the oppressed free, giving liberty, liberty to those that are oppressed and giving sight to the blind. Did that did that happen 1,500 years ago? Yeah. Did that happen 1,000 years ago? Yeah. Did that happen 500 years ago? Yes. Is that happening today? That Te being the worst. Technically, no. Uh <laughs> no, Kevin. Let's not be cynical. Wait, that is wait. What is that? What do you mean? The are we the works, the works of God? Are the works yeah. of God being done today? Yes, definitely. yes, yes. So is it still day? Yes, yes. But is there? But is night gonna come? It says the night. So the night the... is gonna come. It says that it will come. It's not it might. It could be. No, it says it will come. And what happens in the night? According to the I mean passage. darkness. What is darkness and night? There's no, no, not light. Yeah, but I'm talking about according to the passage. What oh, happens when in the no night? No one can work. No one can work. No one. So what should we do as long as it is day? Work the works of God. Work the works of God. What are we working for? Who are we working for? Working for God. We're working for God. Not ourselves. And, and, and what are we working for? What's our prize? What's our treasure? Our eternal life. Eternal life. The treasures in heaven. Work not for the treasures that fade away, but for the treasures, lay up treasures for yourself in heaven. That's what we're working for. And, th and this is, this. Th it seems kind of like weird. Like, okay, Jesus, I mean, sure. Why, why did John put this, this uh, verse here? But it goes completely with the, you know, with the context. Because this, Jesus is talking about what the works that this man is there so that he can show the works of God. And then he says, I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. But then night was going to come and then no one can work. I think this is actually specifically, well, I mean, to us, we could use it as a means of kind of like a wake up type of thing. Like we are still in the light. We are still in the day. We can still work, work the works of God. So let's do that. Let's do the works of God. Let's preach the gospel to the poor. Let's set the, the oppressed to liberty. Let's, let's do all the things that Jesus did because it is still day and we can still work. We can still do it. It is still time. You're not too late. You're not too late. You can still choose the right thing here. Because what? one day, night is going to come. And you won't be able to work the works of God anymore. You won't be able to do the things that you were supposed to do anymore. I mean, let's, let's think about it like this. What do we work for right now? When we have a job, what do we work for? Money. We work for it to get paid. I need to pay for my bills. I need to pay for my car, for whatever, right? And we work for that. And that's the reason why we work. So we're expecting something in return. But if you don't work, what happens if you don't work? Are you going to get anything? <laughs> Absolutely not. I mean, you're not going to be able to kind of... Um... Going back to what you were saying, you're not going to be able to pay your bills. You're not going to be able to, you know, do what you need to. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I feel as if we work 
like we said before, we work to get to eternal life, not not work as a job like here on earth. Right. Get paid to work, work toward eternal life in the sense that um, we have that responsibility. Well, shouldn't use the word responsibility, but we have um, that that uh, that gift that we are able to work toward our eternal life. Right. I wouldn't I wouldn't be so against the word responsibility, honestly, because it does take responsibility um, for you, first of all, and then for the people that are around you. But that comes, you know, after some some uh, upgrades to your person. Uh, but I think Evan was going to say something. We're going to say something. Oh, yeah. Um, it, it sounds like a, 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 you did another roundabout me personally because um i do that a lot because um as as we said um you're right the day today is the day to do the works of jesus but at the which is proclaiming the gospel and is bringing sight to the blind and all these things and we and we see oftentimes and we see people do this all the time and that's like, you know, letting God's light shine through us. But at the, at the same time, you'll know when night comes because God's light is not shining through us anymore. And that's why no one can do it because no one actually it represents God anymore. That's why it's kind of like, you know, going down the daylight and God's light route because at that point, we're, uh, everyone's kind of messed up. Yeah, uh, too far messed up that nobody can do what God wanted them to do, mm. and that's why when when uh, Jose said something about Revelations, it kind of sounded about right because if you read Revelations, a lot of a lot of bad things happen in Revelations. Yeah. So. Yeah, and there there is going to be a time when uh, supposedly Satan is going to reign, and yeah, they're going like to try to go of, against God. Yeah, it was like at the end of the millennium or yeah. something, right? A whole, like everybody, no one is going to believe. No one is going to love God or think about God. Literally every single one is yeah. going to go and, against and that, God. And you could why, use that You could use that as an example. Uh, yeah, and that's why I was like, well, that's when night comes is when Satan comes back okay. because he is the Lord of darkness. Yeah, I guess you could see it that way. I was seeing it more in the sense of when everything's done and said and done, when we're all in the judgment type of thing, judgment day, uh, we have to kind of answer to what we did, uh, we, whether we believed or not. And I was thinking more of that sense because at that point, you know, life is, I mean, this world is done. The universe is done. Everything has basically reached its conclusion. And it's time for us to kind of like answer for ourselves, uh, whether we believed or not. I was looking at more in that sense. Yeah. But I mean, it could I, be they both. all they have they have, they both have their merits. Yeah, true. Yeah, I'm not gonna take away from what you said because it's true. Uh, but still, though, the point of it is is right now while you have life, while you know who God is, if you're learning about Him or if you're already in the path, uh, then keep going, work for your salvation. In the end, obviously, our salvation comes through believing. But we still have to keep going. This is not a sprint. This is a marathon. This is something that we have to continuously uh, keep on until the, the, the day that we die. And just imagine, uh, it's kind of like getting married because the time, that moment when you choose the person you're going to be with, when you marry them, it's for life, or it's, at least it should be. But there's a lot of divorces going on. But with God, is more so of like, are you ready to give your life to God and not think about anything else, not make anything else you're more important than God? That's a tough choice. That's, that's not as easy as it might seem, but yet that's the choice that we're making, hopefully. And, and so as now that we know the truth, now that we know about God, now that we, our eyes have been opened, we can work the works of God. We can do the same for others. And as long as it is day, it is, it is good for us to continue to work the works that Jesus did. 
because not just here in America, not just here in this Bible study, but everywhere in the world, people are learning about God. People are worshiping God and they're working the works of God, whether it's through actual miracles or whether it's through preaching the gospel. Even in North Korea, when religion is not even allowed. <laughs> that's an interesting topic. I think that's a topic for another day. But yeah. I wonder if there's Christians in North Korea. Yeah, right? they found, there was an underground church that was found. Oh, really? There. Yeah. That's awesome, dude. Yeah. And yeah, <laughs> everywhere, everywhere in the world. I mean, the Bible says that the word must, must reach every nation before the Lord comes again. So... Uh, that's that's gonna be true so let's go back to track though uh i i actually had an a, an excerpt is that what you call it i i i there's there, there was like a sentence well it was more like a passage that i saw someone uh that wrote about this uh, verse in particular and i liked it and it says it will come certainly and may come soon and suddenly and when it comes, we cannot work because the light afforded to us to work will be extinguished. And the time allotted us to work in will, be, will then be expired. When the night comes, the laborers must be called. They must then show their work and receive according to the deeds done in the body. For then the time of probation will be ended and the time of retribution begun. I really like that. That is it's pretty cool. It's not, a, it's not the Bible, though, so don't take it as the word of God, but I thought it was pretty cool. Verse 5, what does it say? Um, verse 5, chapter 9, it says, as long as I am in the world, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. That is a very powerful verse. Absolutely. What is Jesus while he is in the world? He is the light. He is the light of the world. What does it mean that he is the light of the world? We saw this like three, four studies ago. But what does that mean? What does it mean that Jesus is the light of the world? First of all, that's actually a pretty big statement. He sets a path in the darkness of the world. He sets a it's like a guide. It's like a Is there any other light? No. No. Just no. Jesus. Yeah. So so what happens to people that don't believe in Jesus? Lost in the darkness. Yeah. yeah. All those people, dude. Are you are you no serious? Matter how Jose? Much, no matter how much money they are have. You, are you serious, Jose? All those Wait, people? What? Dude, Spiritual. right now in the world, you know how many people believe in Jesus? I don't think even like one sixteen of the world. <laughs> yeah, that's true. All those people living in darkness. Are you sure about that, Jose? The answer is yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Evan, I'm trying to make him. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Testing the waters. Hey. Yeah. Got to learn somehow. No. And, but that's how strongly we have to be about this. Are there good people out there? But what about the people that believe in Buddha? What about the people that believe in 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 Muhammad? What about the people that believe in Satan? <laughs> what about the people well, who... you, Santiago, you do make a good point there because um, if we do recall uh, scripture, especially our Bible, yeah, that's essentially um, you should have no other gods before, uh, you know, we should only believe in God. Like a Christian who is God. I mean, Buddha is God. Right, and I think the the Buddha, Buddhists have like how many gods, or is it the what's there's the more, other one? Hinduism, Hinduism, more like Hinduism. Hinduism, Hinduism, yeah. Hinduism has like a thousand gods or more. What about the Roman? 
Greek yeah, what about the Greek mythology? <laughs> yeah. It's wild. We, and not even that. Today, I think we actually are making new gods through new uh, stories. Yes. Especially, it's wild, but like horoscopes. Horoscopes. Even anime, I think mm -hmm. will make them their gods. <laughs> or video games. Or, or actually, I think recently, Lucifer is a big one. People are starting to become Luciferianist, Luciferianist, I don't know, because you know it's kind of dark that I saw recently. What? I was at my school gym at UCF. Yeah. And on one of the screens, there's a big screen. And it, it gives your daily horoscopes. <laughs> so each one has a different whatever. Uh, That's wild. Quote or something. You so guys like today. Today you will run into. You are in perfect alignment with the universe because you're in Aries. I still don't know why the heck people pay attention to those. <laughs> you guys do know that that's mostly run by demons, right? It was mm -hmm. so dark. Yeah. That's, uh, oh, absolutely. There's only one. Honestly, if we if we look into it, there's only one thing or one being that can tell us our future. Who knows uh, yes. everything that's set up for each and every one of us. Because you can then, believe that stuff all you want, but yeah. even that God doesn't tell us really. <laughs> no, sometimes he doesn't. he doesn't. Sometimes he does though, which is nice. But then we we kind of like bring an excuse and like, well, God, did you really say that? <laughs> you really say not for me not to be with this or not to do that? Yeah, but I mean, that's that's beside the point. Anyways, the point is what we're getting at is. There is no other light in the world outside of Jesus. And we've seen it in John 8. We're seeing it here again. And we're going to see it until the end, until revelations. This, there is no other light in the world. So either you believe in Jesus and are saved, or you don't believe in Jesus and you are condemned. Or... You're just like his those disciples that he said uh, who, who he called devils. I mean, their their ending is the same though. The yeah, yeah, I know, but I'm just saying. Yeah, you could you could be like, oh yeah, I'm from the light, but actually be in darkness. And actually, Matthew talks about that, and it's like, how great is your darkness to think that you are in the light, even though you are in the darkness? That's crazy. Um, so we should be aware right? Our light is only going to be Jesus. It's not going to be Santiago. It's not going to be Jose or Anthony. God can do incredible things to every single one of you. And I have no doubt about it. I have literally no doubt about it. The only limit that's going to limit you from doing that is yourself. Uh, because God, God does things abundantly and powerfully. However, will you ever at some point, because of what God does in your life, start to think that you did that you gotta be careful because i i've seen a lot of people that think that they're good that they're great prophets <laughs> apostles but they haven't their their light has not is, if their light was ever jesus then they have changed their light for something else there's a there's a old saying that I I I like to use every so often. It's uh, th those who have who have something don't need to show it off. <laughs> if you're an, actually an apostle, you just be like, yeah, I'm an apostle. Of what? What do you want? <laughs> no, you don't even have to say it. You wouldn't. Yeah, exactly. You don't it. have to say it. It's just like, what do you want from me? I I, yeah. I am. What do you want? <laughs> That's why praying is so good too. Because I feel like it, it reminds you of the reason, which is God, you know? I absolutely I, agree with you. Oh, sorry, Santiago. No, you're good. I was going to say, Jose, I absolutely agree with you on that. Um, it's just something that I feel like a lot of us need more of. We need to pray. That's my biggest thing, you know. Take a minute. You're stressed or whatever. You're in a situation that you're uncomfortable with, whatever the situation is. Take a minute, step back and pray, pray about it. It's, that is very important and it's very powerful too. Yeah, dude.
not just pray, not just praying, but like seeing my weakness firsthand. <laughs> like I can't do this. <laughs> like literally in my prayer, I I I can't. Dude, I can't do anything but that. I I can't do this. <laughs> God, I I need you. I need you. I need you. Please help me. Help me. <laughs> Because there's so much bad that I want to do, but I need you. So if, if without you, I wouldn't be able to keep doing the works of, of God. It's, you know what the hardest thing for people is? To kneel down before God. To understand their dependence of God. That's really what dismisses us from the grace of God. Is our pride. If people see that you're weak, what does it matter to you? If that's the truth, <laughs> why do you want to lie? Don't lie. Obviously, you don't have to show your weakness to people. I wouldn't, I'm, I wouldn't say that would be wise. But definitely show your weakness to God. Dude, you're weak. And through prayer, that's like the one thing that's constant. I need you. Uh, so, does the world have light right now? Yes. Why? Because Jesus is in, is in the world. Because, but I thought he left. Didn't he race up to heaven? Heaven? <laughs> heaven, heaven? <Hey. laughs> I thought he left, Evan. So, what, what about that? Uh, he might have left the world, but he still has his spirit is with us. His spirit is with us. And actually, I mean, very I mean the the one thing uh, I'll, I'll I definitely agree with you on is that spirit. Uh, sorry, uh, Jesus often spoke on spiritual matters, not physical matters. Yep. True. But not just that, but it's the fact of uh, Matthew twenty eight. Um, verse 19 or even it's 18 it's the great commission he's telling this to his disciples and to everybody that's going to become a disciple of Jesus then Jesus came to them and said all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me therefore go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you and surely I am, all, I am with you always to the very end of the age. So, yeah, pretty easy. All right, Juan, I'll see you later. So verse, uh, let's go to verse five. No, 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 verse six, sorry. When he said these things when he had said these things he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay what happened after he stopped talking well he spat on the ground he spat made the clay ground, made the clay and then he put it on his eyes right yep and why, why, why would Jesus do that? Why did he do that? What's the point? That's, that's kind of bizarre. Right? He basically, I mean, immediately after he says, like, like that powerful quote, like, as long as I'm in the world, I'm the light of the world. Yeah. He basically just displayed the practical side of it i guess i don't know okay to yeah it's interesting could be doing the works doing Maybe. the works simply as that hey that that's true he's not just claiming it but he's starting to do it yep anybody else has something else to say are we agreeing with jose 
but yes. <laughs> yes. He's so proud about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, sure. It's still, it sounds kind of bizarre. Uh, let's let's read verse seven. What does it say? And he said to him, "Go wash, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which is translated as sent." Mm -hmm. So he went and washed and came back seeing. So first of all, where did Jesus send them to go? The pool of Siloam. Siloam. Right. It's important because it's translated as sent. And there's a reason why that's there. Um, let's just put that in the, in the fridge for later. But what happened to the blind man? That's what I want to know. He was able to see again. He was able to see. Oh. Interesting. Well, see. Yeah, he's able to see. Yeah, to see, right? He was able to see. Yep. Um, well, so my question here is, couldn't Jesus just heal him right there and then? Couldn't he just like, boom, you're healed. You can see. Couldn't he just like pass his hand or something? Or I don't know. Some other more easy stuff to do. Why does he specifically have to spit in the ground? He has to do like a whole process to, do, to heal this man. What is, why? Why didn't he just like heal him there and there, then and there? Hmm. Was, was, was Jesus trying to show him something? Is he trying to show us yep. something as the readers? He's trying to, the blind man had faith in Jesus, like, what jesus is trying to do the blind man like fall or he he listened to jesus was it, yeah he was it more faith. obedience or was it more faith i think it's more faith yeah mm. obedience faith i'm gonna say obedience and yeah yeah, yeah. it could have been faith could have been faith as well not gonna go against that all right, but still the point that stays is, well, okay, was he just trying to show him what, what is he trying to show him through that? See, this, this is a difficult, I think a lot of people have a lot of different opinions on what this means. I mean, I'm sure you can go look up like commentaries and it'll be a varied type of things. Um, I can't say for sure that my answer is the right one, but I do find it intriguing. There's an interesting tip from Genesis 49, A through 12, uh, that can help us kind of like figure this one out. So I'm going to read it for you guys. So what happens in Genesis 49 is that Jacob is given kind of like prophecies over every one of his sons. And eventually he comes to Judah and he prophesies unto Judah these words. You are he whom your brothers shall praise. Your hand shall be on the neck of your enemies. Your father's children shall bow down before you. Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, you have gone up. He bows down. He lies down as a lion. And as a lion, who shall rouse him? The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet. Until Shiloh comes, and to him shall be the obedience of the people, binding his donkey to the vine, and his donkey's coal to the choice vine. He washed his garments in wine, and his clothes in the blood of grapes. His eyes are darker than wine, and his teeth whiter than milk. Interesting prophecy. But this whole prophecy is talking about the Messiah, and that the Messiah is going to come through the line of Judah. And also very interesting is the fact that it says until Shiloh comes. Shiloh here means the scent as well as it means in in John 9, Shiloham, which is scent. So it's the same word, just used in different ways. 
So the scent until Shiloh comes is talking about Jesus. And here in nine, Jesus tells this man to go and wash his eyes on the river that's called Siloam, which is translated to scent. And it's interesting because he's here telling him, he's showing, he's, he's showing them who he is. Jesus, what really he is doing is showing him who he is. Because this prophecy is well known by the people of Israel, even by the ones that are, are not well versed, like probably this blind man. Because he's still Jewish. So they know their culture, they know their story, their history. And when he, says to, when he says this to him, he tells him to go to this river that's called Siloam. And what happens? Lo and behold, when he washes his face, he's able to see. Like, you can just imagine he goes there, he's washing, and when he opens his eyes, he's able to see everything like he never saw before. Very interesting. Also, Jesus sent him to go to do that. Um, and just as the other thing that I would add to that is the fact that what you said, Jose, was true, is the fact that we do need to have obedience and faith when it comes to God, but at least obedience, because there's some situations where faith is just going to lack for whatever reason. It just seems impossible. Uh, for example, with Peter, when he was in the, in, when he was in his boat and Jesus told him to go and send his net so that he would grab fish. Peter is an experienced fisherman. He knows when fish are not going to come to his net. We've been here all night. We got in nothing. And Jesus comes up to him and tells him, go and put the net again. And you can see it in, in the passage. Peter was like, sure. He just does it out of obedience. He doesn't do it because he believes. And in that obedience, when he does it, he's able to see that what Jesus said was true. And even though his experience told him otherwise, that there's no way I'm going to catch any fish, he still caught the fish. There's also the sense of, like, we, we are part of this work as well. Like, God uses us to know him, to understand him, but we have to be willing to, to kind of, like, listen to him. Like, am I going to do what you're telling me to do or not? You guys have any questions about that? Comments? Points of view? I know nothing. Nothing. No. Yeah. I just thought it was inter interesting because, you know, Jesus usually just did miracles and it just happened. But specifically for this one, he spat on the ground, made clay with the saliva, and then he put it on the eyes of the blind man. It's, it's interesting. Anyways, so we don't pass the time because I know we have to leave at seven. Let's go with verse uh, eight. So um, verse eight, chapter nine. Therefore, the neighbors and those who previously had seen that he was blind, said, It is not this he who sat and begged. So let me read that one more time. It says, Therefore the neighbors and those who previously had seen that he was blind said, Is not this he who sat and begged? Right. So you, you, can, you can think about this. There was a blind man that was probably begging and um, had this whole situation going on for the, 
for the whole his whole life. And then out of nowhere, he comes back and he's able to see. What was the people's reaction? I would assume they were in disbelief, that they were in awe. Like, how could somebody who was born blind or even at that point had that, um, that uh, incapability uh, is now just all of a sudden able to see? Yeah. I mean, the, obvi- the obvious thing that they probably did, they go up to him and go, how the heck did this happen? How can you <laughs> see right now? Right. We know you. You're blind. Dude, is, are, are, weren't you blind? <laughs> Dude, what happened to you? What does verse 10 say? Um, it goes on to, um, we'll read verse. Uh, yeah, verse 9 is a little, uh, nine. Is a little bit longer. Um. Yeah, it just goes on to say that uh, some said, uh, this is he. Others said, he is like him. He said, I am he. I am he. Uh, therefore, uh, they say to him, how were your eyes opened? Was this, was this surprising? I yeah. assume to them, yeah. yeah. Honestly, surprising. Yeah. It was surprised me. Dude, it, it, aren't you blind? <laughs> it, it'd be like... Um... Going yeah. to a hospital and seeing people with broken legs just sort of get up and dance all of a sudden. Yeah, that would be like that would be super impressive, interesting, and just surprising. And then verse ten, what does it say? Ten verse. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. I I got a little ahead. I'm sorry. It said therefore uh, they said to him, "How are your eyes open?" um verse you want me to go to yeah. verse no, no just verse 10 verse 10 is this, okay is this the normal reaction this yeah. would be the normal yeah. reaction right yeah how how were you changed what happened who did that and unless you don't i this is just coming from any kind of perspective and what i see um unless you don't believe in god you really wouldn't believe um how this happened or would understand i should say how this right would affect i, I mean was... you'd believe you'd believe that a miracle happened you just would believe that you will God. understand it you know yeah true but yet because this it's... is this is very clearly an obvious work of god and everybody is amazed by it like it's very clear it, like if i if i if an arm regrows out of me that's very clear. If I'm if I was blind and now I can see, that's very clear. If I was deaf and now I can hear, that's very clear. So what does verse 11 say? Verse 11 goes on to say, he answered and said, a man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eye and said to me, go to the pool of Solomon and wash. So I went and washed and I received sight. It was that simple. <laughs> what what did the blind man share with, with them, with everyone? His testimony, basically. His testimony. He shared the work of God in his life. What what do you share with the people that are surprised by your change? Have they even seen a change in you? Have you changed? Right? That's a question for all of us, I think. People should be surprised when they see you. Like, wow, this person? (laughs) God worked in this person? Dude. When we share, what do we share with people? We share Jesus the things that he did, the works of God that he's done in our lives. He is the number one. He has worked in my life and can work in your life. He is the God of miracles. He is the God of the living, not of the dead. He is here to heal us, to make us be able to see, to make us be able to walk, to be able to, under, to, be able to understand. That is the works of God that he wants to do through every single one of us. If this man wasn't blind, he wouldn't be able to do that. If I wasn't in a situation where I'm constantly dependent on God, 
then I wouldn't be able to say that God did it, right? I'm in that situation. I'm in whatever situation that you might be, you might be in that situation that so that you may glorify God through his work. And that's the awesome thing. Why are they, why do, why do bad things happen to good people? Well, first of all, there's no good people, but these things happen so that we may show the works of God. I mean, once again, once again, my viewpoint on the word, the word good is good is relative. There is something better than good that you need to look at. Right. But still, you know, in the world, people are going to say, why would God allow that to happen to that person? Why, why are people killing, stealing, raping, murdering, lying, cheating? Why all this? And we, we haven't understand that what, what, what God wants to show us is how amazing he can be. That even in those situations, he can use that to be glorified. Dude, I know so many people that have been molested as a kid, Ugh. yet they're Christians and they love God. And I'm like, dude, how? That's such an awful situation. I, I wouldn't dare like think about that for my life. I would be, dude, that would have been crappy. But yeah, these people, and not just that, there was a person that was, that didn't have legs, that his blood, he, he was born with uh, AIDS and his whole life, like he also had a, a disease where if he cut himself, he would bleed to death. And he's like 50 years old today living a whole life through that without any legs he has a wonderful wife and he has two healthy girls that didn't inherit that same problem that he had and today he glorifies god like no one else and he does like some crazy worship and he knows who is the one that has done the work in him and you think wow dude and i see these people and i'm like how Dude, life has been terrible for you, yet you're like the happiest, most dependent person of God that I've ever seen. Well, and it's like amazing. That's well, crazy. Well, you put your finger on it. How and why? Well, how through God? Why? So I could become a living testimony. And that's the, we, we shouldn't, if bad things happen to us, we shouldn't see that as, oh, God hates me. I must have done something wrong. If anything, let that be a situation that God can use for your betterment and so that you can glorify him. Absolutely. I feel like each and every one of us, um, whether we understand or have been through it or yet to be through a situation where we question that, um, we eventually will get there and will be able to and or are able to share our testimonies and, and share our walks of uh, of God um, to other people, and yeah. it is a very unique thing when you get to that point. Yeah. Well, as I like to say, don't worry about it. You got your whole life to get it right. <laughs> yeah. So, but the, I mean, at the same time, it's like a problem for me because. How can people say, well, my life has been just terrible, the worst. You don't know what I'm going through. You don't know what's happening to me, Santiago. You don't know. It's just God hates me. Like, my life is terrible. I want to die. You, you have no idea what has been done to me. And I'm like, dude. <laughs> oh, I know. Sure, I, I, sure, maybe not me. But I've seen many people out there that have gone through worse things than you do. And their faith is as strong as ever with God. And so you see, this is a problem of the heart. This is a problem of you don't want to believe in God. It's not a problem of your situation. It's a problem that you don't want to believe. And you're trying to fault God for something that he never did. If anything, if we are in a bad situation, if we're in a place where something is wrong, most likely, first of all, look at yourself and think, have I done everything right? Is, I've, I've made the right decision always. Am I a good person? Am I a perfect person? That's the question that you should ask. Because that's what, that's what it means to be good. But is anybody in this world perfect? Well, 
no, nobody's perfect. So, you know, the really the, the, the main issue why God, why people don't want to believe in God is not because of what's happening in their lives. It's because they just don't want to believe. Absolutely. And like they take the short way out, essentially, like um, in saying that, uh, like you were saying, oh, it's God's fault. And, you know, I'm in this situation. I have it so bad right now. But little do we realize how fortunate we are um, as people to be blessed day by day to actually have another day to walk this earth because we aren't always guaranteed um, tomorrow. And, uh, we all take that for granted. We all, we don't think twice about that. And um, we are absolutely, we are blessed absolutely in our lives. Um, whether we personally may see it or not, um, we are, or that person, whoever it may be, um, going through a tough time, or so they think they're going through a tough time, uh, just have to realize that God, you know, is there god prepares you for or you prepare yourself for eternal life with god um but yeah yeah but you know it's still like it's like it makes me wonder dude like some people have gone through some really 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 bad stuff and they can keep the faith like to me that's amazing to me oh, that's, that's crazy like I, I honestly don't want that to happen to me. <laughs> I don't want to be in those in the same shoes. But if my love for God is going to be as great as their love for God, dude. Oh, absolutely. I mean, dude, I could say I, this is another story for another day, but I years ago was was put through that uh, test of faith and um, with God and the church itself but i was put through that and you know i stepped away from all of that not in blaming god for that either but um more so the church than anything and uh i lost connection with you know um my spiritual side and uh i ended up just as of recently coming back to it and realizing um how grateful i am that i'm able to come back to it yeah dude because there's nothing better than god <laughs> Absolutely i not. like it's it's crazy i i can't imagine living without god yeah uh, i mean what's what's the thing i well one of the many things i keep quoting which is uh, the road to god is a straight and narrow path and many many don't find it yeah because it's not what the world it's not what everybody's going it's well, not the door that everybody wants to go through <laughs> also something else i always say don't worry about what that guy's doing his soul is his own concern worry about yourself yeah you know honestly it sounds kind of selfish it sounds kind of bad but this is the one time that you get to be selfish this is the one time that you should be selfish this is your life and your eternity is in your hands so make the right choice. It's not in anybody else's hands. It's in your hands. And so give that to God. <laughs> right? Um, otherwise. So verse 12. Um, here, I'll go ahead and uh, finish that off. It says, then they say to him, where is he? He said, I don't know. But this is one of the things that it kind of goes back to my testimony of how I was born again. But that's one of the things that really bothered me. There was a person in my life. It was a good friend at that time that asked me who God was, you know, what the purpose of life was since I was a Christian, because I was saying that I was. And just as this man did here, I had no idea. I couldn't answer that question. And to me, that hit me like a ton of bricks. That hit me extremely extremely hard and it's one of the reasons why i was born again <laughs> but the question to you guys is do you know him and if you know him dude, then prepare yourself to make a testimony of him and 
this shouldn't be hard if you really know him. Like you should see in your own life what he's done through you, what he's done in you. Otherwise, maybe you haven't depended on him enough. Maybe you haven't understand what your weakness is and you haven't got br br brought that before God. The strongest, the strongest person in this, in this life, the strongest person in the kingdom of God is the weakest and have that, have no doubt about that. The person that knows who they truly are, that's the strongest person. The strongest person in this life is the, is the weakest because they had to go through so much to become strong. Not, well, <laughs> not even just that is the fact that that's the person that understands if it's not yeah. because of you, if it's not by you, like we're down here. <laughs> well, well, once again, if someone was born strong, they don't under, they they they'll know how to use their strength but they won't know what it means if someone was born weak but became strong they'll not only know how to use their strength but, but they'll also know what it means true. true i just don't want to confuse that with like my strength and yeah god's strength yeah we're talking about we're not we're talking about spiritual strength which yeah. can only come through god yeah true Absolutely. And I've always, I've always thought, like, I've always um, said that, and, and especially recently, like, put God first, put him first, and he will do the rest for you. Put him first, whatever you need to do to put him first, whether it's to read the Bible, or read a devotional to pray, put him first and realize he's, he comes first, and then everything in your life will play out from there, because of God. Um, and lastly, uh, to finish the study is just the fact that these are the works of God. And since there's the works of God, that's the works that we should be doing. It's not, it's not a maybe should, you know, I, I, I might I'll try. Not everybody has to No, this is for all of us. I mean, that's what we read in the great commission make disciples of all nations this wasn't just for the disciples this was for us uh, today and if we truly believe then we will do the works of god and i'll i'll read it to i'll read it to you guys again just because i love that passage so much the spirit of the lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Dude, what's the best thing that you could do for somebody? Is to help them be able to see. To free them from their chains. To give them the good news, the gospel. Anything else is really kind of like I wouldn't say I wouldn't like I don't like to say worthless, but sorry, something like that. <laughs> Anyways, uh, any comments, questions, concerns? Yeah, I think uh, I think we gotta stop torturing Jose. <sighs> yeah, um, I will say though, this this is gonna keep going on for the rest of the chapter, so it's important. This we set the precedent is the fact that this work of God will show. I mean, this work that Jesus did will show how amazing it is, and it was for this time for this moment and even for today because it's still i mean it was written about in john so let's let's keep that in mind um the story of the blind man is very very interesting very important and in contrast the story in john 5 uh so if you guys want to read that one you'll see the difference uh, between these two people that were healed and how how human beings can be 
but how amazing it is to actually glorify God and understand what the place that he deserves is. So we'll leave it at that. So I'll pray. And, or actually, if you, one of you guys want to pray, I'll be okay with that. All right. Okay. Um, <laughs> oh. Better, rock, rock paper you. scissors. <laughs> all right. All right. Um, yeah, dear, thank you for your grace and your mercy to give us the ability to have each and every one of us here in this Bible study this evening. Allow us to continue to grow in knowledge of your word. Allow us to continue to practice your word, dear Lord. Uh, keep a watch over each and every one of us here uh, this evening. Continue to strengthen us and allow uh, iron to sharpen iron. And keep your word forever with us each and every day. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. We don't take any of what we do for granted here. We don't take a single breath for granted on this earth and we thank you for that uh, dear lord continue to allow us to be led by the holy spirit and walk in you in your light dear lord continue to watch over us and allow us to stay away from the darkness let you be our light dear lord and in your name we pray amen I will, I will, I'm going to, we do do the Lord's prayer at the end. So I'm going to do that, Anthony. If you don't mind. Our father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, thank you guys for coming. It was a pleasure. And um, see you guys later.